What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. And I am Onika McLean, and we have a treat for you. We have a treat for you in the most treatious of ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we have Miss Cindy Rain on deck. She's a singer, songwriter, and she's here to promote her latest EP, The Mask. Thanks yes. for having me. Yes, You're thank welcome. you so much for coming. God, I'm I'm so impressed, and you have not opened your mouth yet. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so tell us about your music, like. Right. So my music is acoustic soul, but some of the influences are classical. There's some Caribbean influences. There's some jazz influences. There's some Latin music influences. There's a little bit of everything that, you know, kind of melds together. Like New York, kind of. Exactly. Right. So are, do you have any Caribbean background? Yeah, both of my parents are from Trinidad. Me oh. too, yeah! I knew she wanted to cook up in a pot. I knew she wanted to do a Caribbean cook up. I can feel it. I can feel it. Yes. Okay. 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 So I ain't saying nothing else. <laughs> I'm gonna just sit here because no, I heard Anna James yes. in your yes. music. Yeah. I was like, this is very nostalgic woman. and just beautiful. Just it's beautiful. That's the word. Like, right. Her music is what beautiful sounds like. Oh, thank you. That yeah. Like I was like, oh goodness, lady. Okay. Yeah. So talk about kind of the influences behind that, like in terms of like, how did you come up with that sound? Yeah. And the mask, like what is that, what is that title? What is that about? So <laughs> the, the story of the mask was that uh, my business coach gave me a branding exercise and she asked me to reach out to my community and to ask them to describe me in three words. Mm -hmm. And most of the responses that I got were some variation of sunny and upbeat and positive and happy. And mm -hmm. I was like, um, that's not what the music necessarily sounds like. There was a lot of stuff in minor keys. There were a lot of like, you know, songs that were written out of pain. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what's this disconnect between how people see me and what I'm really feeling. And I right. realized that the disconnect was me. Like I was actually putting on a mask. I was walking around with a goofy smile on my face all mm -hmm. the time. Right. Um, because I was, I felt uncomfortable expressing dark emotions. Mm -hmm. So, right. Um, right. you know, nice. in realizing that I was basically really fake. <laughs> I sat down at the piano <laughs> like and I wrote this song about like coming to terms with the fact that I was wearing a mask most of the time. And, that was the last song I, that I wrote out of the five songs on the EP. And when I wrote that, that's when I started to see the common threads between all the songs that I, I had already written. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is this is the EP. This is the title song and we're done. Right. Um, nice. The sound was crafted in England because I, I, when I moved back to New York after being in North Carolina for 10 years, the advice Ooh. that I got in working on my debut album was find someone who's in the industry who's already making the kind of music that you like and pay them whatever it costs just like figure it out oh, um okay because i had spent many years just paid for uh, to find a producer you mean yeah for mm -hmm. the producer okay because i had spent many years like since I was a teenager, I'd been in basement studios throughout Brooklyn trying to, you know, find my sound, and I just was not able to find like what clicking. I wanted. It wasn't. So a few years ago, um, someone told me that I reminded them of Asha, a French Nigerian singer songwriter. Hmm. Oh, she just talked about her. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So um, I went and listened to her music, and I had found her last album. And I followed the Google trail and I found the producer who produced it. His name was Blair, McC Blair McKitchen. Mm -hmm. He's in Hastings, uh, UK. And I reached out to his manager and I said, hey, I want to record with you. Uh -huh. And um, he said yes. So nice, when nice. I got him so on the phone. Just ask for what you want sometimes. Are you guys you get listening it. to this? <laughs> yeah. okay. but, but before we even go there, like it, there's, there's an element of persistence because when I reached out the first time, there was no response. And I was like, oh, they don't want to talk to little old me. They don't want to oh, record no. me. And my feelings were hurt. So my right. coach was like, no, you need to follow up. So there was definitely an element of, you know, reaching out. And, so how and many times persistent. do you have to follow up before he, you actually got him to respond? Um, I don't remember. Maybe like two or three times. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a lot. 
I just okay. had to do it more than once. Yeah, I had right. to get over myself um, <laughs> and just realize that people have wow. other schedules that you know have I'm nothing to you, do with me. To get into a comedy club, I went right. twelve times. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like twelve times. Wow. wow! Before they actually called you. Yeah, and then one day I just kind of went, and they were like, oh, "Just get up there." <laughs> All right, you're hired. Like twelve wow. times is a lot of times. Yeah, it is. That's persistent. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like this is, <laughs> right. this is not this what is I'm it. hearing from from your generation, and I am, and I am so pleased. Oh yeah. <laughs> People do. Millennials do. Have I'm not saying that they don't. I'm just saying, you know, the common thread is instant gratification, mm. and that's just not always the case. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So that's the mask. Yeah, so when I um, reached out to him and I told him how I found him, uh -huh. he was like, oh, you like Asha? Well, let's get Asha's band. So, Whoa. So get he called out. all of the musicians that were on Asha's band, and they are the musicians who played on my EP. And oh, my gosh. The, wow, look um, at that. The bass player, uh, he also plays uh, another stringed instrument. I don't remember whether it's the violin, but he, he did all the string arrangements. He got his... his uh, father and a, a couple of um, people, the, a few um, string players to do like the live string arrangements on the album. Mm -hmm. So that's where like the classical, almost musical theater oh, kind of element comes where, from. Okay. So yeah, we started off just in the room, just jamming and just seeing what happened. And then- And you went to UK to do this? Yes. For three weeks, I stayed with the producer. Oh my gosh. Um, and- Did you just spend all your money? Well, I did a crowdfunding campaign to fund that. Nice. Um, I raised twenty thousand dollars. Wow, you just made it happen. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it Are was... you kidding me? Oh my god! I just want to wrap you up in, the <laughs> in a motivational kit <laughs> and be like, mm -hmm. "Listen, Listen to this. Her. This. this right here. <laughs> this. It was the you scariest get... thing I had ever done up until that point. But you figured but it, it out. Figured it out. I think this business coach lady is like she a god. She is the she is the truth. She sounds like yeah. <laughs> you gonna say something else, but you. Not not exactly, but you know she 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 knows when to be firm with me and just be like, Cindy, get your life. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm gonna get my life now. Oh my god, <laughs> so that was like a dream, kind of kind of like a dream come true. So what did your friends and your family say? And you're like, I'm going to the UK and I'm gonna you know do this. What they, what did they say? At which point? Before or after the money was raised? Oh, <laughs> before, before. Before. Everyone was looking at me like, you trying to raise how much money? Are you sure about this, Andy? And he was like, yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Right. right well, you, you know, believe, you know. Because if you don't believe in you, who the hell else is going to believe in you? That exactly. is the truth. Yeah. You and your biggest support. Because I'm telling you, when we looked at your press kit, we're, I was like, yeah. Oh, wait, she on is point. on point. On point. Oh, yeah. Thank you. On point. Yeah. 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 Impressed. <laughs> Thoroughly impressed. Thanks. Caribbean girl. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it has anything to do with my You know what? You know, know I'm the daddy of people that they just be doing shit. Can, can I just big up my people for a minute? Thank you very much. Thank you. Trevor. <laughs> okay. You hate us, not the haters. Sorry. All right. So, you know. T T okay. money, T T money. I know about that. T -t oh, money. you know. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, guys, keep it locked. We're gonna come back with part two with our amazing interview with Cindy Ray. Keep it locked. <laughs> mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, mom. Please. No, we're having dinner oh, soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Groove. 
Zinkle Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Welcome back to What's the 4 one where we're talking to the lovely Cindy Rain. And now yes. she's talking to us about her writing process and what it is that gets you through Gone. writing. Yeah, it Gets you, like, momentum starts to build. <laughs> yeah. So usually I'll write when something comes up. Um, a lot of my songs have been about relationships gone bad. <laughs> <laughs> or situationships gone bad. Situationships is a whole oh, thing. Oh gosh, situationships. Oh. I know about yeah, that. Yeah, they are a hot mess, but they make great songs. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Lots of, lots of emotional, uh, mm -hmm. lots of emotional things to pull from there. Mm -hmm. um, and... I know you also said that you kind of write from, in, in fact, in your own words, you know, writing from the shackles of a painfully complex childhood and what that is. I know, right? She's like, hmm. <laughs> so part of my story is that I grew up with very, very low self-esteem. I was bullied a lot in school. Um, for all of middle school, I thought I was ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think that's middle school, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think that's Meads, middle school. I got that they a lot torture too. you in yeah. middle school. Yeah. They should I got cut that too. A, They should get rid of middle school. <laughs> I but agree. they know what happened in high school. But there's no place for it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say? It's just this these awkward years where you're like raging hormones and everybody's mean and evil to, leave, mm -hmm. to each other, and then you have to deal with that and contend with that through life. Right. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Right. Exactly. They just just stretch it out. Stretch elementary school to like about seventh grade, mm -hmm. and then pick it up in high school, eighth grade. Leave it, it alone. Was, it would happen in sixth and seventh grade. Then it's gonna happen. That's just the years when it's gonna happen. But at least you're with the kids that you were with when you were a baby, as opposed to these all these new kids. That's what it is. All the cluster of the new kids trying to fit this puzzle back together mm -hmm. for this little bit of time. I've thought about this. <laughs> in depth, I can see. I've I thought can see about you this definitely because like, my daughters had gone through a lot of crazy stuff mm -hmm. in middle school. A lot of middle schoolers try to kill themselves because of this stuff. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. A lot. In general. general. Yeah. So, so that was bullying. your... Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I looked at all of the trends in my relationships in my 20s, I was like, all right, something, something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. And I could trace it back to, you know, the beliefs that I had about myself when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. My wanting to become an artist, it just led me on this journey of, okay, how do I fix my self-esteem? Because this mess, like, I can't take this with me where I Throughout want to life. go. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. right. And I like So how'd that. you fix it? Yeah. Like, how that, how's that, well, I mean, how are you fixing it? Because yes. it's a continuous it's, thing, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. this, this little oh, ugly, dumb girl comes, always comes back and like, you ain't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get a check. Beep, beep, beep. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting her in check right now. Right. Um, but yeah, working with my coach has been very helpful. I've done a lot of body work. I've done. Um, What's body work? Uh, what is body work? So there's like energy healing. There's oh, right. things Reiki, like Reiki. Reiki and things like zero balancing and inner space techniques. Wow, this is and... this is different. I haven't heard any of this besides <laughs> Reiki. I haven't heard any of this. So I think zero people balancing? at home are, are probably yeah. like, "What is that? What what is that?" A little Whew. bit. Okay, so in a zero balancing session, it's it's kind of like okay, so I'm laying on a on a massage table and the practitioner is like moving different muscles and moving different parts of my body because apparently like the the mm. trauma gets like stuck so in my body it. It, and get under here yeah under here some people hold it yeah. like where you hold stress mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. old trauma your body right. keeps reliving it yes mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. And You're getting it out. Yeah, getting it out. Girl. And like the fluid in your body gets stuck when, you know, certain traumatic experiences happen. So like it's kind of moving that those things around. Um, mm, okay. I had a, a, I had a session with a, a bioenergetic therapist oh, where we wow. dealt with a lot of wow. the tension that was stuck here for me. Always. And that's why, why your throat, where you sing and all of that. That's but always with black women, I mean, maybe other women too, probably, but always with black women, we are told not to tell stuff. 
mm-hmm. not to talk about what happens in our house. <laughs> not of course. To, so many. Don't tell it, your secrets. So we're verklempt mm-hmm. often, and then and then we lash out, and then we <laughs> then we're angry. Uh-huh. But yeah, yeah. Like we don't talk about a lot of things that we should talk about. Right, exactly. Mm-hmm. And so that's Ooh, definitely helped you. You are, oh my God, you are enlightening us. <laughs> yeah, definitely enlightening me because a lot of this stuff I had not heard and before. And I hope you guys and, are being enlightened also. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. So, so like you were saying, whenever we hold our truth back, it leads to literal tension in these muscles at the base of the tongue. And I found that it was affecting my singing and it was also affecting, like there were times where I would want to cry and I would want to release emotion and I would feel like there was a literal frog stuck in my throat and I couldn't get it out. But like doing some of this therapy work has allowed me to just release all of that and it is changing my singing and it is allowing me to just Throw it up. Throw it yeah. all out there and just <laughs> cry. Yeah. Like if you ask me how I'm doing and I'm not doing too well, I will tell you the truth and I just might cry and it's gonna be okay. I know, that was what in the song. <laughs> that was in the song. I'm like, oh my God, that, that's what it is. That's a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. That is a beautiful thing. Yeah, and so you just you're just feeling like freedom. Yes. Right. Yes. I like that I'm good. Like allowing like myself to just feel the full range of my emotions. Because when I allow myself to feel my pain, then it makes the joy real. It's not like Right. Right. right, and then and then you're like you're you're more creative too when you're feeling the full That's range exactly of your emotions, saying. right? Once you get to once you get to feel it, you get to heal other people because mm-hmm. it's all about the onlooker, right? Mm-hmm. And what they see and how they relate, right? Because it's about your truth. Yes, and truth sees truth. Yeah. So if right. I'm being fake, then no one is gonna resonate with it. But if I'm, you know, putting myself out there and being honest then that's when someone goes, you know, I felt the same thing. Right, right, so exactly. Then, this so, is like, so this preach! Is, so then <laughs> wait a minute now. So I know that now, because this seems like a very new you, and so if this is a very new you, tell us about your relationships, because that has to change too, because once you start doing inner work, you can't deal with the stuff that, that you wasn't before. serving right. you before. So how does that work? Because that's, that's the difficult part, no? The relationships all fell away. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. everything that was not serving me or everything that I didn't feel was at- Celebrating you. Or at a- <laughs> Release it, Cindy. <laughs> My standards have gotten a lot higher. I have decided that I want an amazing relationship and I refuse to settle for anything that's medium. Like, it's it's okay. Right, no ho hum. Yeah. And for a while, I was just like, yeah, this is is cool. But you got to have that relationship with yourself first. That's the thing. Yes. So that amazing has to come from within. Mm -hmm. I'm working on it. Yeah. Right now. The nicer you treat (laughs) yourself, you know, those inner talks, Mm -hmm. it has to be more like, you got this. I like this. This is chocolate. So that was all. Be nice to yourself. Be nice to yourself. Get up there, short. I'm like, oh, relax. You're being abusive, Onika. <laughs> that was literally me a couple of weeks ago. I did a Facebook Live and I uh, played classical piano from memory for the first time since college. And usually, if I'm playing classical piano, anything musical, like I'll always harp on the mistakes and be like, mm, you messed up. Yeah, you messed up again. But during this like five minute piece, I was literally like giving myself a pep talk. Like, it's okay, Cindy. You can do that. <laughs> you just that. have to see. That's, that's all right. That's yeah. sweet to yourself. You have right. to treat yourself mm-hmm. like white people treat beautiful white children. <laughs> it's just like, oh, Nika, you are so <laughs> You know, he's oh, like, you okay? What else do you want to do now? What What else are you, like, it, it, it has to, it, it's going to feel inauthentic until mm. it's right. Mm. They know a lot. <laughs> I'm telling you, they study culture that's what they do all right they can colonize it but i'm just saying yeah okay (laughs) i don't know why i did that i'm sorry guys we (laughs) we're gonna be right back part three (laughs) of our interview with cindy rain we're gonna be talking about bringing it right back to music keep it locked hey going out like that yeah why well, um, what would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark! We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! 
even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz Zinkerpel. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always yeah. worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Welcome back to What's the 411 where we're talking to the singer, artist extraordinaire, Cindy Rain. Welcome back. Thanks. So we were talking so much about, you know, spirituality and getting yourself really centered and how that's helping you with your music. And you're feeling better about yourself. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the song, Irresistible Me. <laughs> Girl, you're rocking out in that song. You're like Thank confident you. in everything. Talk about like the process of making that song. <laughs> so it's pretty ironic because that song was not, it did not come from a confident place at all. I was really? in a situationship when I wrote that song. Oh, yeah. And it was kind of like me trying to prove to myself that I was good enough. And it's very interesting because the first draft of that song, the lyrics were very different. It was like your typical, um, okay, so the first version of the first verse was, um, took a look in the mirror, noticing my smile, had to stop for a second, I caught my own eye. Favorite jeans, favorite clutch, and my pearls, and the shoes that make me feel like I'm on top of the world. So. Um, nice. I was talking about an outfit that I didn't own because I was totally, I cared not at all about my appearance. Mm -hmm. And it was my picture of what a confident woman looked like. Mm, okay. So when a few years later, when I came back and revisited the song, like I changed the lyrics. And those lyrics changed to wave goodbye to that scared little girl. Now I really feel like I can conquer the world. Mm -hmm. And it changed the meaning of the song from, you know, a vision of what I thought confidence was to like, no, like, this is real. <laughs> like, I'm, you know, I used to be afraid and I'm no longer afraid. Like, we're doing this for real. Nice. 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 And I like how you brought in different women and all the different women oh, are yes, looking confident so and stuff like that. So was that, <laughs> did you have that concept in your head when you decided um, to make the video? Actually, no, not at all. What, the, the concept that I had was uh, the pole concept because I started taking pole classes at um, S Factor oh, yeah. in maybe 2014, 2015. And that was like the first time in my life I had ever felt like sexy and confident. So when I thought about Irresistible Me, I was like, there needs to be some pole in this video. <laughs> 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 um, my videographer, he was the one who came up with the idea of the vignettes of all of the different women and it just worked together. So we just put it all together. Um, and like that, the, the video it was just so much fun. It looked like fun. <laughs> it looked like fun. We were basically nice. dancing across New York City, basically. <laughs> yes. So you talked about um, Asha, the, the artist that really like inspires you. Is, is there, are there any other artists that inspire you and kind of make you think, hmm, like you may want to work with them. Hmm. Jill Scott. I, I can see that vibe. Scott. I can mm -hmm. definitely see that vibe in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she has, she's definitely all about like sensuality and loving mm -hmm. herself mm -hmm. and that confidence and stuff like that. I yes. see it. I definitely see it. What do you want from your music? I want my music to heal people. Oh, oh wow. That's powerful. That just hit me. <laughs> right here. Wow. So what what is next in terms of like music? So you're out with the EP, you have five songs on it. What's happening next? So now I am performing more. I have my first international gig in Switzerland in July. Oh. I'm super excited oh about that. How did that come about? Um <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, Instagram. Like, <laughs> so my 
day job is that I am a, a voice and piano teacher. Mm -hmm. And oh, last okay. summer, I had a student who was from Switzerland. He took lessons throughout the summer. And at the end of the summer, he said, well, I'm about to go back to my country now. And I was like, oh, you're leaving? And he was like, oh, by the way, I own a restaurant in Switzerland. And once a year or a couple times a year, we have bands come out and perform. Would you like to come? And I Are said, of course. Oh, <laughs> Beautiful. Right. So we set that up. It's happening in the beginning of July. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I have a couple of friends right now who are working on South Africa for 2020. We, oh, yeah. did, did we introduce? The, the, I don't know. Did that happen? Yeah, yes. she did it outside. Okay. 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 Yeah, because she's doing South Follow Africa up. too. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, the okay. synergy. The right. synergy. You guys have similar energies. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Both mm -hmm. have definitely like that very mm. spiritual kind of connectedness yes, as well. Yes, that's what I love. You feel so calm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is, this is Are you amazing. an Aquarius? No, I'm a Sagittarius. Kind of close. My mom's a Sagittarius <laughs> and she has that very connected kind of like spiritual, everything's very philosophical mm -hmm. and everything is connected it and she is puts a, the dots together. One. Yeah, so she does yeah. that a lot too. Um, so you talked about Europe, you talked about South Africa, so where can people see you here? Yeah. I will be at the Groove Club on June 17th at 7. Is that the Groove oh. Street? Yes. Yeah, I know the Groove. I, I, I'm oh, a comedian, yeah, I know there. I know so I'm there. always down there. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's probably, you know, me at some point, you never know. Ooh. Well, the music people, like, they kind of like do their own thing, but maybe. Yeah, we'll have yeah. to connect anyway. Maybe we'll come. Yes! Yes! That's what we should do. Which, which day is it? June 17th. It's a Monday night, June 17th, 7 p.m. June 17th, 7 p.m. The group, so do, mm -hmm. they get, do they get tickets? How do they get? It's a $5, it's a $5 cover. You just show up. And you just show up? Come on, $5. guys, you got to really, see this. It's going to be a great show. Before she blows up, you can this see her for $5. This is not your average singer-songwriter. You... You're gonna get like Ella Fitzgerald vibe. Like it's, I was like, I did not, like I didn't expect that. You know, I didn't expect you to sound like that. I just did not. Really? I, I didn't. Really? I didn't no, like, I was like, it, it's, like it just fit her. the piano and it, it just, yeah, yeah. You love it. So proud of you. Thank you very much. Yes. And so glad to meet you. I'm glad to meet you all Thank too. You. And share your your all your social media handles yes. so, so we can find you. I am at Cindy Rain on Instagram and Facebook, and it's spelled C I N D Y R A I N N E. Um, and on YouTube, it's Cindy Rain Music. And I'm on Twitter, but I'm not really on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same handle at yeah. Cindy Rain. So all of her social media is Cindy Rain. Mm -hmm. And the website, www.cindyrain.com. Does yeah. anyone use the www? We do because Onika does. Oh, no, no, Onika does. I don't. Onika does. <laughs> I like to say worldwide when. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks we for having We had so me. much fun. I had fun too. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, and I'm going to start right. following you. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure you guys follow her too, okay? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.